the self-life is being given a lot more time a lot more attention and because of that people are more easily getting injured and sin has multiplied so that today we have a young four-year-old child raped by her father you know and, and and all of that kind of thing the people are getting raped and murdered and all of that kind of stuff and so sin is multiplying getting more complex hallelujah sin is getting more complex and so because of that man's soul is getting more wounded more injured more much more pain than before and because of that emotional issues are rising and increasing more and more and more and as the emotional pain is increasing so also sicknesses are getting to inflict man's body more why because they come from a sick soul and so a sick heart will work certain conditions on the body that causes the body to release gases that should be released when you're dead to decompose the body today somebody must begin to get the healing today even physical healing I remember we dealt with rejection the other day and there's a certain precious soul that sent me an, an SMS and told me when we dealt with rejection I got healed of, of ulcers what was the connection ulcers came through emotional issues and so when God healed your emotions ulcers just went why because medical doctors say that ulcers are basically the product of excessive acid hallelujah what is acid is gas plus water your body began to emit gases that were meant to decompose the body when you're dead and it began to emit those gases while you're alive and the gases mixed up with water and you got as acid and that began to eat up your body that's what ulcers um, is caused by are we understanding and so satan uses man against man to a larger degree than he uses uh, demonic forces directly against you not so many people have direct satanic attack but a lot of people have direct human attack and so satan hides behind the mask of fellow man to attack you to a greater and larger degree than any other person that he uses now I know that almost everybody in this place here has something that man inflicted on your life. Almost everybody in this place has someone that you do the best you can to hide away from. Some of us, who, if somebody called you up, you would find yourself fearful and wondering what to say. Because you're bound to that person. You're a slave of that person. And God wants us to get delivered from man. Hallelujah. God is calling us to get delivered from man. Somebody say, be delivered from man. I must be delivered from man. Now close your mouth and say, I must be delivered from him. Just mention the name of the person. Hallelujah. Must be freed from man. If you don't get delivered from man, you will never truly be the master of a Satan. Must get to know how to live above man. I mean, people can concoct ideas against you. You wonder what they, where they got all of those kind of things to mix up together and get the idea. People can get to create things about you so crazy you've never thought of. You wonder which hell did you go to? I mean, people can create things. You wonder which hell, which corner of hell did you go to to get the idea you got? about me and that is saints I don't think it was sinners around it and I don't think it was even nominal Christians must be great men of God so if you don't conquer man <laughs> you can't live on earth because the earth is fully inhabited in fact the man man's population is growing at a rate higher than the population of demons demons fell once their number is constant demons don't give birth Oh, are you in this place here? <laughs> but we got millions born on the globe every year. So that even the island of Patmos where John went to hide is now inhabited. You can't hide anywhere. So if you don't get a way to, to live above man, you will not live on earth. You'll die before your time. 
some of the craziest ideas come from the most unsuspected people you'd never expect a man of God anointed to speak like this hallelujah so we understood that there are some things we're going to do we understood that the question that we should ask of ourselves is how can I get to a place where I live above man's issues how can I get to a place where somebody can get to create such an idea against me and yet when I hear about it it never touches me how can I get to a place where somebody can lie about me such a created fermented lie and yet when I get to hear it it never touches my soul at all because somehow you will get to hear it how can I get to a place where somebody can slap me but I never feel it how can I get to a place where somebody can take advantage of me financially and get to call me out of something and somehow I just don't feel it how can I get to a place where somebody can be working witchcraft against me and I know they're doing everything they can to bring me down and yet I never feel it hallelujah how can man work so hard against me and yet it never gets to my heart never touches my body never touches my mind I go on serving the Lord's cause I wake up every day and I don't even care to find out why he did what he did because it's not important to me. how can I get to that kind of place where man never affects me negatively that's the question that we should ask ourselves now I know that it is possible because one because I'm a free man number two hallelujah man never affects me you can tell me any crazy thing man spoke and I never get to find out who said that because it's not important hallelujah number two in Psalms 32 verse number six say therefore let everyone who's godly pray to you while you may be found surely when the mighty waters rise they will not reach him there's a place you can be and man plus satan can start up the mighty waters but it never gets to touch you they'll speak crazy things about you they'll concoct some concoction and you just you don't even need to pray saying the send back to the sender I got people that are battling with men. If you hear somebody's wig and witchcraft against you, you pray send back to the sin. That's all nonsense. The battle is not mine. I don't protect myself. Why do I try to protect myself against somebody that I know of? While the Bible says that the devil himself prowls around me like a roaring lion. Looking for somebody to devour, but it cannot get to me. If God has so much hedged me that the devil himself cannot get to catch me, what about man that I see? I'm not going to bother with the man that I see because there are many more enemies that I don't see that God has hedged me about. And if God can protect me against the enemies I don't see, what about the enemies I see? I'm not going to struggle to try to look for man to explain himself. I'm just going to keep on walking, going on with my cause because my life is too short short to go trying to sort out things with people i must go on serving the cause for which i came hallelujah god is calling you to get delivered from man you're going to never say be delivered from man hallelujah be delivered from man so how can i be free from man we saw some couple of things i want to recap very quickly so that we can go to the next thing the one we saw that you must conquer and live above man's opinion we saw that opinion is is an analytical idea is an idea that is a product of man's analysis of you when man looks at you and analyzes you then they form an opinion of you an opinion is basically an idea that is formed concerning you and we understood that every man that claims to know you has an opinion about you everybody that claims to know you has an opinion about you everybody in fact man will form an opinion even at first glance they see you the first time and they have an idea hallelujah so we saw that there are a couple of things we're going to see we're going to do we understood that even Jesus expected that people should have an opinion about him in Matthew 16 and verse 15 that in Jesus asked, asked the disciples who do people say I am 
as they see me, as they hear me, they must have formulated idea about me. Who do people say I am? And the Bible says that they say it. Some people say, you're Elijah. See, see how, how wrong people can be about you. Some say you're Elijah. Others say John the Baptist. Think about it. Then he asked the disciples, I think you should have a closer idea. Let me find out. Do you know who I am? And the Bible says that Peter jumped up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my father in heaven. In other words, no one can get to know me except my father sneaks to you. And my father never relates to fools. My father will never speak to a fool that will gossip about me. About me. He'll never. Hallelujah. My father will not reveal me to somebody whose plan is to hinder me. My father will never reveal me to somebody that is jealous. My father will not reveal me to somebody that he wants to use. That's yielding a short circuit. Hallelujah. That's the person my father can reveal me to. God hardly reveals people to people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you must get to understand that you must conquer and live above man's opinion about you. So how do you live above man's opinion? Number one, you must never, never rely on man's opinion to define you. It's right there down. Never rely on man's opinion to define you. Never rely on man to define you. If you ever depend on man to define you, man will make a chameleon of you. You will always have to change color depending on the environment. Hallelujah. If you go in the midst of people who when you dress so well, they say you're proud, you're going to have to look for some tattered clothes. I mean, man will always make a chameleon of you. We understood that Jesus said, that it does not rely on man's opinion. John 5, 34. Does not rely on man's opinion at all. Rich man came to Jesus, called him good man. Jesus refused to take up that praise. I love that. He said, why call me good? No one is good except God. Why? He was just seeking not to be influenced by the man. Because if you accept praise from people, then when you're next to them, you will always try to do the best you can to live up to the praise. Now you understand what I'm talking about. You will always try to do everything you can to make sure you fit into the description. How many people have been like that? Are you in this place here? Where some people kind of praised you in some way and you, after that you did everything you could to make sure you fit into that description. So you don't disappoint them. You see how much effort we make to try to appear like just because of what we perceive as man's expectation of us.